Lately, I've been researching a very simple question that has a complex answer. What happens to a community when the majority of young people move out for education? My name is Jeff Childs. I'm a cultural anthropologist at Washington University in St. Louis. I've been conducting research in Nupri, a Highland community in Nepal, for the past two decades. And about 10 years ago, I began to notice that there was a noticeable absence of young people in the villages. You saw infants and toddlers, but you didn't see middle school age kids. And so upon inquiry, parents were telling me that they were sending their kids out to distant monasteries and schools to get education that was not locally available. So with my graduate student, Namgyal Chudup, we launched a research project to find out what was happening and why it was happening. We use the lens of anthropological demography to investigate this migration phenomenon. Now, anthropological demography sounds like an oxymoron because whereas demographers love numbers, anthropologists tend to celebrate their innumeracy. But when you bring the two disciplines together, you can get a very robust data set that includes quantitative and qualitative perspectives. On the quantitative side, the demography allows us to find out what is happening, where are people moving, who's going in terms of age and sex and so forth. With ethnography, our qualitative side, we can dig into motives. We can interview parents and find out why are they sending certain children outside of the valley, where are they sending them to, and how do they rely on their social networks to get them admitted into certain institutions. So when you bring these two together, you've got a great qualitative and quantitative perspective that work in tandem to give you a much deeper understanding of what's happening. <laughs> So we started by training some local young people in how to do survey research, and we worked side by side with them to do the surveys for the quantitative analysis. Now, a lot of social scientists uh, hire others to do the survey research, and then they sit in their offices and wait for the data to come and arrive at their doorstep, whereas we actually go out and do these surveys ourselves. So we navigate courtyards with ornery yaks, we go into people's houses, we get to know their living conditions much better, and we get to know these people personally. So our data set is not just a set of anonymous numbers, of faceless numbers, it's about people's lives and about the tragic deaths that they experience within their families, but also about their hopes and aspirations in sending their children outside for education. From the survey data, we learned that over 70% of young people no longer live in their natal villages. They don't live with their parents. They're being raised in distant institutions in Kathmandu, the capital of the country, and sometimes as far away as India. From the interviews with the parents, we got to understand that social networks play an incredibly important role in shaping the directions of this out-migration. So for example, religious networks that started developing 100 years ago or more are now shaping where parents are sending their children because they have connections in certain monasteries and certain schools that run through these religious networks. But we've also been gaining an understanding of some of the issues that this out-migration is creating. For example, on a very personal level, some parents now struggle to entice one of their children to come back and take over the household and therefore be able to provide them with care in old age. At a community level, we're finding that a very elaborate Buddhist ritual system at the village level is becoming increasingly hard to maintain because so many young people who would provide the labor and provide the produce for these rituals are no longer there. Anthropological demography has really been a critical lens that we've used to understand this migration phenomenon in Nupri. But in the past, I've also used it to investigate other research topics. For example, how is fertility moderated in a place where there's no modern contraception? Also, I did another project on how modern contraception becomes a political issue in the context of a rapid fertility decline. And I've also used it in rural Tibet to understand how labor out-migration is affecting families' abilities to provide care for their elderly residents. So it's really a great combination of disciplines that allows you to understand not just demographic processes and what's happening with the population, but also the impacts at both the personal and societal levels.